Oh, hello. And ladies and gentlemen, Shawnee Smith. I stole my damn thunder, man. That was that was my big intro. And Dunkin' Donuts. Good evening, everybody. So seriously, though, how about a, a, a real round of applause for these guys? I don't, I don't sit. If I sit, I'll fall asleep. I've been I've been awake way too long. So guys, again, like I said, thank you for coming to Connecticut Horror Fest this year. Thank you for welcoming the cast of the Saw films. Yeah. To yeah. Tobin Bell, as you know, played John Kramer in all of the Saw films. John Kramer. <laughs> Shawnee Smith, who started out with a small role in the first. It blossomed into personally my favorite role in the whole franchise. I love Amanda Young. I love, I'm a little crazy. Be careful. <laughs> Sean Patrick Flannery. Yeah! Woo! So, let's start off with Mr. Bell. Um, how did you first, assuming you were probably the first casted, I would assume, how did you get the role? How did, did James Wan reach out to you directly? Is it something he sent you script for? You didn't have to audition, I assume. Tell me about how, you, how it came about. Uh, I think that... Um, who played Detective... Uh, the, uh, Glover. Danny Glover. Danny Glover. I think Danny Glover was cast first. Awesome. Uh, Carrie always maybe was cast second. Uh, I don't know anything beyond that, and I'm just surmising that. Uh, I played a role in a television series called Once and Again, and I was Patrick Dempsey's father. And, uh, I was cast 754th, just I remember that shit. <laughs> uh, it was a, a series that was on uh, just before we did Saw, maybe a year before that. And uh, I played Patrick Dempsey's father, and I was a guy who you didn't see, uh, who uh, it just lingered in the darkness with a hat and a, and a trench coat. And Patrick, on once and again, was psychotic and had uh, voice, heard voices, and one of those voices was his father. And so he would have one of his episodes, uh, and he would start to hear these voices, and that's when I would appear in the shadows, and I would say stuff like, you're shit, you've always been shit, and you'll never be, you'll never be anything you're else. terrible father. It sounds just like my dad, actually. Terrible. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so, uh, but I use this, voice and the woman who cast Saw cast once and again and uh, when uh, James Wan got lucky with his with his uh, 10 uh, minute short and uh, Saw was on the boards she remembered me and she said James you've got to see this guy and so I went and I sat and talked with James for a little bit and read some of the tapes and uh, and I made some suggestions to him, of course, you know, uh, which, some of which he followed, one key one he didn't, and he was probably smarter than me. Uh, and uh, that's how I got the part. Uh, it, you know, one thing leads to another, so it's one of those situations where say yes when you can, and it can maybe become something, you never know. Awesome, awesome, thank you. <laughs> That's pretty much the opposite of what I'm telling my 20-year-old daughter right now. <laughs> Say yes whenever you can. I'm like, no, my name is no. My son is no. My number is no. <laughs> yeah, that's... Uh, All about no. <laughs> having an eight-year-old daughter, I'm, I'm with you. I'm, I'm with you on that. Uh, Shawnee, now your role, obviously, much smaller in the first film. Um, did you have any inkling 
I, I guess not, because nobody knew what it was going to become. Nobody knew the, the mega hit that Saw would become in the horror world especially. Um, there are no small roles. That's true. <laughs> true. When did you first realize not only how big a hit it was, but that you were going to have a much larger role moving forward? Well, I realized it was going to be a big hit in, when it premiered in Sundance. Okay. We were all in, sitting in the back, the producers and James and Lee. Mm -hmm. And were you there, Tobin, at no. Sundance? I wasn't there. Yeah, I didn't think you were. I but was in the Czech Republic. When you stood up off the ground in that theater, I'll never forget it. And this is like Sundance, you know, or a bunch of like, oh, snooty, you know? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. And, uh, and they lost their ever-loving mind, man. They, the theater erupted, people were blown away, then they started clapping, and I mean, I've never seen anything wow. like it, and we were all, it was palpable, Was you it know? the first time you had seen the finished film? Yeah. Sundance? What did, what did you, what was, what was your reaction? Were it you was, blown away? I, it was, Pretty, well, I spent most of the movie like yeah. <laughs> watching through my mini screen. Because not notably, it's, it's, everybody knows, I think, that you're not much of a horror fan. Well, I just don't like to be scared, and okay. I get scared. Like, I couldn't sit through the first Halloween. This time last year, my neighbor had like a, we were new neighbors, and he had a screen up and some friends over to watch Halloween. I was the only one screaming and jumping <laughs> halfway through. I said, I'm just gonna go in the house with the kids. Because <laughs> I was stressed, you know? <laughs> Anyways. And the, the second part of that was, um, at what point did you realize that you were Oh, because I lived. Because I was like yep. the only one that lived. Yep. And then there was something in, most of the time when I signed, you know, a lot of times I write, he helped me because that was the, the essence. Something in that line caught the imagination of James and Juan yep. and the producers. Like, oh, that's like, because they had this huge hit and they're like, where do we go? Right with this, you know, so there was something there. And being the only one to live through it <laughs> helps. Yeah. Excellent. Sean, um, you came in later. Had you seen the other ones before you were asked to be in Saw 3D? I had never seen a single Saw. Okay, <coughs> okay. Are you a horror fan? You better say, you better say yes. <laughs> <laughs> you better say yes. I'm a fucking rebel. There you go. <laughs> I'm actually not. Uh, okay. I, 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 I'm a good fan. Fan of uh, good films. I, I like good films. Sure. You know, some of them are scary. Some of them are romantic comedies. I, I mean, my favorite films run from, you know, Life is Beautiful with Roberto Benigni to Grease. Yeah. You know, I, I, I love Grease. You know what I mean? It's like, everybody claims love to Greece love... too. Thank you, man. Everybody claims to love Chariots of Fire. We How can many do a friends musical have Grease you number, seen please. at their house that on their shelf? Fucking none. They all have Grease on the shelf. They all have Grease. You know what I mean? So I love good films. Certainly there's some scary films that I that I love. I love The Exorcist. I love the Damien movies. Those are just very cerebral. And, they are. And when I saw the first Saw too, I, I thought, you know, it's funny hearing you say that because I was watching it, obviously, on a DVD whenever they called me about Saw 7 and I watched and I thought the same thing. The minute he stood up, I had no clue. No clue. I mean, I saw that for the first time. Nobody given me a spoiler in all those years. And I was like, oh shit. <laughs> I mean, it was, I was that Sundance crowd. And I was like, okay, yeah. holy shit. Yeah. So I, yeah, it was the first time for me. And, and exactly what Shawnee said, I remember seeing Saw in the theater and it was the same. I was one of those people that stood up. As soon as, as soon as he stood up, I was like, yeah, come on, get out of here. Yeah. And the whole theater was, uh, was really, so it, and it was a, people, I mean, yeah, it was I remember my friend Benji of Skin Dread, awesome band, but he's there from Wales. I don't know if anyone's heard of him, but you should look him up. But uh, he was in Wales, and they somebody they were in line, you know, for the and some Jack oh, said uh, the guy on the floor gets up and he was beaten to like within an inch of his life. As anybody like, who reveals spoilers should be dead serious about you know yeah. like. Don't, that's sacred ground, you know? Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's, that's why uh, I said there are no small roles, because, well, for lots of reasons. But it's not a matter of how many lines you have. It's a matter of where you fit in the story and what your 
power is in the storyline. Uh, one of the first films I did was Mississippi Burning. I didn't have a big part in that film, uh, but Gene Hackman brings some FBI agents down from Washington, and I'm one of those three agents, and I help solve the crime. And not a big part, but uh, pivotal, as they say, you know? So say yes, even to small, small parts. You, you, you know what I asked you earlier when we were in, in, in this room for the breakfast? I said, what was, that, what was that where you were tied to the wagon wheel? You know why I asked you that? Because earlier we were talking about just like that. You know, sometimes somebody is just significant on camera. And any, anybody, raise your hand if you ever saw The Quick and the Dead. Well, he was the dude that was tied to the wagon wheel in the beginning. And the entire film, I was like, I want to know more about that motherfucker. That motherfucker was tied to the wagon wheel. Yeah. And it's true. It I, really was cut, I was cut out of the movie. I, 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 there was more of me in the yeah. movie. So be prepared. Say yes, but be prepared to get cut. <laughs> but I don't think I was alone in going, wait a minute, what, what about the dude, that mad dude that was tied to the wagon wheel? You know? Yeah. His name was Dog Kelly. Good fucking name, dude. <laughs> that is a good name. It's a Sam Raimi movie called The Quick and the Dead. It's about gunfighting yeah. in a western town. Yeah. Gene Hackman. Great movie. Yeah. I, I love it. I've Me always, too. Loved, Me I've too, always loved that movie. Yeah. Russell Crowe. Yeah, great movie. Leonardo DiCaprio. Yeah, DiCaprio. Young. He was young. That's Some tiny, point. small yeah. B actors, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's ever heard of those guys. Yeah. 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 But uh, yeah, that's if you've never seen it, definitely see it quick in the day. It's cool. Um, question for you about the Bobby Dagan character. Yes, sir. How do you view him? Do you view him as a as a tragic character? Do you feel bad for for his arc? Because I mean, he kind of brought it upon himself in my eyes. How do how do you feel about it when you read for the character? Did you, how did you feel about it? I think he's a steaming pile of shit. Okay. <laughs> I was trying. Let's try to give you a little you know I mean? I'm not going to get too cerebral on it, but I mean, obviously, anytime you play a role, you've got to convince yourself that it's right. Yeah. And you've got to throw some conviction in there. I mean, I'd argue articulately why he was, he, he was you know, well-founded in what he did, but yeah, from the outside, steaming pile of shit. Yeah. You know? All right, well, you are an deserved honest everything man. he had coming to him. Failed miserably to save everyone and his loved ones. Yes, he Ended did. up poking holes in his titties to no avail. <laughs> Didn't save my wife. He roasted her in a brass pig. What the fuck? Who does that? <laughs> There's your wife, she's frying up to a crispy golden bronze yeah. and that brass pig. Where the fuck do you get a brass pig? <laughs> I'm not even worried about the wife, I'm just, I want one of those. Brass I want a big brass pig. Piggy, piggy. <laughs> Turn it into a pizza oven, you know? <laughs> Shawnee, as a... As a <laughs> I'm killing myself. Um, did you guys get that? Yeah, there's a yeah. brass piggy, 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 well, I mean, I know you've done the blob, which is a. Uh, I'm a lover of horror, just for not the genre scared. and the fans. Yep. I just don't like to get to scared. be scared. I get mad when I get scared, <laughs> and it doesn't end well. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, it's stressful. Yeah. But um, what was your question? <laughs> <laughs> How did you feel about the role when you read for it? Oh. Um, well, it was kind of a tough time at, at the time in, in life, and so I read it and I said, oh gosh, like, pretty cool story, but I just, I, I didn't have it in me, I didn't think I had it in me to live that out. It's an intense even story. Even for a day. You know, I'm just like, I just don't have it in me. And then, uh, but, but thank you, you know? And then they said, just come and, into the office and watch the scene because that's the scene that they yes, filmed. Yes, that's the short, right. And so I says, okay, you know, that was so nice to ask me to, you know, yep. say hello again. And I came in and watched it and I was like, oh my gosh, that's bitching. I can live, I'll live, I'll, I'll get my shit together to go live that out. <laughs> awesome. Well, we're all and then I had the flu the day that we filmed, so oh. it was like I just made it all like my, my acting teacher, he would say, uh, Use what exists. Use what exists. 
pay attention to what exists and use what exists. And so between the flu and the jaw trap and the big heavy metal <laughs> yeah. thing and the life experience at the time, I mean, I just used it all. Right. Excellent. Well, thank you for using it. Thank you for asking. Thank you guys for watching and being the like, greatest, most loyal fans of any franchise history. You guys are blow my blow my mind, my heart. Yeah. Thank you very much. Horror yeah. fans are passionate. Yeah. So, somebody downstairs asked me to ask you a question, Mr. Bell, um, and I thought it was an interesting question. They said, ask him if. In reading the scripts for any of the of the films, were there any traps written that you said, "I think this is too much"? I don't. I, I think because as we, as we know, some of them are brutal, some of them are, are really tough. Was there any that where you said, "I don't know if I want to, I don't know if I want to do this. I don't know if my character would do this. I think this might be too much." Anything that crossed the line in your head when you read it? I didn't pay a lot of attention to the traps. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, there were too many other things to pay attention to, and there were people who were much better than me at uh, um, thinking about what was possible, doable, uh, what they wanted to include. You got to remember. I mean, as much as I care about the through lines and the threads and John's. Uh, what's going through his head and how he relates to others and what his motives are and that all of that kind of thing. We're, this is a horror movie and people go to be scared. And, but that's not my forte. Uh, and so I rely on others who are more in a position to make those decisions and they're technicians and artists and um, uh, very talented people who design those traps uh, uh, and did a marvelous job doing it. And I knew that they would make them work. And uh, there, I know there was a lot of discussion at one point in time how the traps really varied from being extremely simple uh, mechanical devices to being very complex as the as the series progressed uh, I let them have those discussions and to come to and come to conclusions without uh, I was too busy paying attention to how I could enrich the scenes that I had with whomever I had those scenes and make them more human and more personal so that there would be another layer in the film I wasn't thinking about layering it I was thinking more about moment to moment uh, trying to create reality like it was happening for the first time moment to moment and that was my job that's what actors do they try to bring humanity to whatever character they're playing whether it's an astronaut or a priest or a, um, a guy who lives in a loft and designs mechanical machines to uh, trap assholes. <laughs> so I always am looking for something deeper than what's on the page. You see all those things, are they're right there. They're written on the page. The events are going to play out the way they're written on the page. They don't need me to do that. They need me to fill in the places and bring them a lot, to bring the moments alive. Excellent, thank you. At this time, I'm gonna open this up to uh, some questions from you guys. I'm sure that uh, you have better questions than me for these guys. You got somebody? Okay. Uh, first, I want to say thank you for coming to Naugatuck, Connecticut. Talk right in. Talk right in. Oh, okay, sorry. Uh, thanks for coming to Naugatuck, Connecticut. I literally live 10 minutes from here, and I grew up watching all these movies. They're my favorite by far. Um, my question is. <laughs> My question is for all of you, uh, if you didn't play the characters that you did play in the films, which other character would you have wanted to play? Jigsaw. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so is that a trick question? Okay. <laughs> uh, Shari. 
the kid in powder. <laughs> <laughs> I made a career out of making movies that nobody sees. I love so that. the fact, thank you, brother. But the fact, the fact that they, you know, they called me and they said, "Hey, do you want to be a part of an already successful franchise that's going to come out in 2,000 screens, regardless of how it turns out?" I was like, "Fuck yeah!" The agent's like, "Why don't you read it?" I'm like, "Fuck yeah!" The agent's like, well, "What should I tell them?" Fuck yeah! They're like, "Well, I'm going to let them sit on it for two days." I'm like, "If you fuck this up." <laughs> Why don't you just re fucking tell them yes? That's no shit. That's how it went. I'm like, I do independent shit that nobody fucking finds out about. There's five million motherfuckers that are gonna watch this. Fucking say yes. That's, that's honestly it's showing you the wizard behind the curtain. That's the truth. I don't sound too cool for school, but I was like, fuck yeah. Next question over there. Yeah, so, um, okay, which was your favorite movie to film? And also, can you say uh, the line from the movie? <laughs> yeah! Can you say what? The, the, so could you hold it closer to your mouth? Do you want to play a game? Can you say the line? Yeah! <laughs> can, you, can you say it? I just wanted to say, first off, Sean, I'm, are we going to get a boondock Saints Street? Woo! Yeah. Whoa! Yeah. I don't know, brother. Two things. A, don't hold your breath. B, don't hyperventilate either. <laughs> no. uh, I know they've wanted to make one since the second one came out because, you know, it's... it's uh, but uh, we got to figure some shit out first. Thank you, brother. Appreciate it. Got another one over here? This one for Sean. I know you said your character in Saul was a piece of shit. I'm curious how you feel about your character in Boot Knock Saints. Say it again? How you feel about your character in Boot Knock Saints. The cat? Fuck that cat. <laughs> the cat's a dick. I agree with that. Did you say the cat? Yeah, that cat know. was a dick. Your, your, your character. Oh, my character. What do I feel about my character? Uh, very similar. First, let's get back to the cat, because cats are dicks. We had six of them. We only shot three of them, but I would have gone all six takes. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> No shit. We need some earmuffs for this young lady here. When I go in, when I go in, when I go in work, my cat looks up and is inconvenienced that I open the door. My dog is like, oh shit, oh my god, where have you been? I can't tell time. How long were you gone? I'm like, I just went out to take the trash. Like, fuck, I couldn't tell. What do you want to do? You want to watch TV? We don't have to if you don't want. We can take a nap or we can go for a walk. I don't care what you I'm just watching. My dog loves me. Fuck that cat. Uh, the character in Botox Saint. Uh, I feel very similar to how Tobin feels about his character. There's a lot of motherfuckers out there that deserve that shit. And uh, I, 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 I respect the fact that they're cleaning up the streets. You know, it, it, it's like in the film. You know, you watch a movie, you, you watch the news and these, you know, horrible crimes. They get, you know, six months probated sentence. You're like, no, they should be degloved and set on fire. And I love the fact that the Saints did that shit. Shorty, I loved you and Becker, gave me a lot of great laughs, and I'm wondering, uh, that must be a lot of fun to do comedy, but what aspects of horror gave you enjoyment in working? a game of tennis it's working off of comedy is like there's a, a rhythm to it you know um, the scary stuff horror is like a heighten it's more like like if you put up like punk rock with the comedy somehow like you're working off each other but there's this oh <laughs> <Can't grab that. laughs> a true story who has this scam yet look fucking apple care bullshit motherfucker <laughs> Apple Care doesn't call me going, just checking on your phones, all things working, fuck you. And you answer it and the guy's like, hello, I'm from Apple Care. Later on the base. 
I am in San Francisco. Just press nine and you'll give me. I can control screen and make very economic. Fuck you, Apple. Don't answer that shit. They don't fucking call you, Apple. You can't even call them without being on hold for two fucking days. Like they're calling me, just checking up on your shit. You see that shit, Apple Care. Said Apple Care, right? Yeah. Fuck off. <laughs> what's going on between the takes, you know, of the horror movies, so <laughs> you're laughing a lot. Like, so earmuffs right there, sorry about that. Yeah. <laughs> How you doing there, Sydney, my nine-year-old in the front row? All right? All right? Huh? Good. Go ahead, you give me a thumbs up. Good. You we'll work on that question you're going to ask me, Sydney. All right, good. Got another question over there to your left? Um, this is for all three. This is a line from another horror movie franchise. But what's your favorite scary movie? Yeah. When a stranger calls. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Calls coming from within the house. Oh shit, a little bit of TT left my Jimmy Johnson. And I was a kid, but that was like, oh shit. Yeah. I mean, a chill went up my spine when that happened. Ditto. Freaked me out. Ditto. Or when a stranger calls back. Uh, I guess... That? Is that some made-up shit? Did you make that shit up? <laughs> We're trying to cast you in it right now. Oh, oh okay. When a stranger... I'll do that shit. Hell yeah. Hey, hey, hey is it going to come out? Then fuck yeah. Tell me what's your favorite. Um, I don't watch a lot of horror films, but uh, I watched a film, an Australian film called Wolf Creek. Oh, oh yeah! yeah. I, I, I like the, the music track was very strong, and, and the, the film was great, but the music track was really, really solid. It is. It's called Wolf Creek? Yeah. Is that current? Australian. Uh, a few years. Yeah. I'll check that out. Nope, nope. John Jarrett. One second. Hello. Stand up. Oh. He's got a mask on. Sorry. Uh, uh, what do you guys feel about the uh, Chris Rock reboot? I was going to leave that alone personally. I, I, I wasn't going there. I, I think it's amazing. I, uh, if, uh, if you want to play a game. <laughs> Uh, it's, it's amazing because he's a talented dude and he went to the studio with this, uh, with, uh, with a passion for Saw. And, uh, you know, I can't comment on it a lot beyond that because I don't know a lot about it. It's uh, evolving as we speak, uh, but you can be sure it'll be interesting uh, whatever angle Chris has on the Saw story will be worth seeing. Yeah, I can't wait to see that. Chris Rock, Sam Jackson, you had me at hello. It, it, it does seem a little out of context, but guys like that don't do, they, they don't make mistakes. You know, Chris Rock doesn't make a bad film. Whatever came to him, he thought, holy shit, this is going to work. And guaranteed, 99% of the time, he's going to be right. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Nice, man. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Hey, guys. Um, question for Tobin. Yeah. How many uh, apprentices can a man have? <laughs> <laughs> Only one good one. Yeah. She's right. <laughs> Any other questions right here? You can stand up, and then we're going to have one right here in the front row. This question is also for Tobin. Uh, Tobin, you mentioned earlier that you had some notes for James Wan uh, when going over the character. What was the note that he didn't take? I thought that um, John Kramer should say more when he got up off the floor. It was only about one line more, but I thought if you're going to sit through two hours of this shit. Uh, you, you better find out something more about what's motivating this guy. And uh, that, so I had written a couple of lines, so I wrote the lines down on a piece of paper and, he, and I said, yeah, I think he should say a little more when he gets up. And James said, like what? And I said, like this. And I held up the piece of paper and he took the piece of paper and he read it. He went, hmm, can I take this? I said, yeah. 
said, I want to put it in the next draft. Meanwhile, if anybody ever tells you they're going to put something in the next draft, forget it. <laughs> uh, but uh, anyway, uh, I'm not sure if it ever ended up in the next draft, but uh, uh, I don't think it did. And when it came to doing the scene, we had a, it was, they shot, saw one for a million dollars. And it was in 18 days, and it was very fast. And James had to really move, and he was being pushed all the time to, to finish on time. And we shot uh, the getting up off the floor scene. It took them three and a half hours to build the prosthetic on my head. They did not want to have to, they did not want, not want to shoot that scene and not get it on the first take because they would have to rebuild this whole thing on my head and they didn't have time. So we rehearsed it a few times. I got a couple of really good tips from James, one of which was, I want to see a little more in your body that you're, when you get up, that you've been there for as long as you have been. I said, thank you. And I adjusted that, and you see it in the shot, so I really appreciate what he said to me. And uh, um, So anyway, I showed him the piece of paper in, in our meeting, and he took it and everything, and, and I think he said, go ahead and say what you want to say. It was only like another line or a couple of words that just illuminated more what the hell you've been watching for the last two hours and what this guy lying <laughs> on the floor had in mind. And I was thrilled that he was willing to have me say that. And so when I got up, I said what was originally in the script, plus what I had in mind. And um, as I went out the door, took the thing off, went out the door, slammed the door, game over. Yeah. And the producer, Oren Coolis, is right outside the door. I slammed the door, I'm still in my, you know, and I slammed the door, and standing right there is this producer, he's going, we got it, we got it. And he was so excited that we didn't have to do the other scene, so it was all about the timing. We get to post-production, I go in, James is there, he needs me to loop some stuff. We loop the entire film, the tapes, the whole thing, we get to the end, he said, are you ready? Do you want to see it? And I said, yeah. I said, what, what, what? He said, when you get up off the floor. I said, yeah. He shows me the scene. My lines, they're gone. <laughs> <laughs> the original line is there. And I said, James, they're gone. He said, yeah, I know, it didn't work. I was like, okay, it's your film. And, and, and you know what? It was. You know, it, you can, sometimes my ideas, and sometimes they're pretty good, but <laughs> and you win some and you lose some. And, and I frankly uh, think James probably knew better than me. And so, uh, you know, he trimmed them. And I've been trimmed out of a lot of things, a lot, a, a lot of shows, you know, different scenes, you know, that Quick and the Dead show that Sean was talking about. I had this wonderful scene with Sharon Stone uh, later on in the film. And, uh, but when you're in a film with Russell Crowe, Leonardo DiCaprio, Gene Hackman, uh, Lance Hendrickson, uh, and uh, Sharon Stone, it's the stars who are gonna get the screen time, often. And so, you know, Sharon catches up with me with her six gun, <laughs> and I'm gone by the second act. Uh, but I had this wonderful scene in the second act with Sharon that uh, never made it to the film. So none of that matters. What matters is that you do good work and you keep your eye on the goal. Right, Sydney? Yeah, good. Okay. <laughs> got one more. One more question. Hello, this is... Um... I just wanted to say thank you all for coming here. It's kind of been my dream to kind of meet all of you. You're the most chill, wonderful people, complete opposite of your characters. <laughs> but um, just thank you for coming. I love you guys. I hope you can make more movies. And if you don't make more Saw movies, just be in a damn movie. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Let me tell you, it's not lost on us either. Thank you guys very much for coming. It, 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 it's, 
we, you guys show up, a lot of you guys drove an hour, two, three hours to get here to tell us you love some shit that we did 10 years ago and we've already been probably overcompensated for. So it's, it's, it fills my heart and I, I, I feel blessed. So God bless you guys all. It's Thanks for that ending. That was epic. Thank you. Hey guys.